Okay, we've talked about putting batteries end to end, and we've used the word series to describe this connection between the batteries. And when you put those batteries in series, then you just add up their voltages to get the total voltages, the total voltage. For example, six of those one and a half volt batteries gave us nine volts. And six times one and a half is nine. We're now gonna put some flesh on these bones and, and help you to try and understand when things are wired in series and when they're wired in parallel. And this will be important in understanding how circuits work. The key to understanding series and parallel is knowing where the battery is. If you don't know where the battery is, then you don't know whether things are wired in series or in parallel. So in this example, the battery's right here. And it drives a current in this direction, shown here, in a clockwise fashion. That current passes through this resistor and then the same current passes through this resistor. And you say, well, hang on, Dr. Edwards, I think I've got you there because um, this resistor is gonna get rid of some of the current, right? Wrong. Resistors do not destroy current. The same amount of current that comes in one side of a resistor goes out the other side. I'd like to encourage you to get that in your brain because uh, this is a source of a lot of misconceptions. Were it not so, let's say that you, um, that the current coming into this resistor was more than the current coming out and the resistor was somehow eating up that current. Well, charge is conserved, and the total amount of charge in the universe is not increasing or decreasing, but if you, if you have less current coming out the right side than you do have coming into the, into the left side, that would mean, given the fact that the current is a charge divided by a time, that would mean that you're gonna get charge buildup And this thing would become highly charged. And then you start getting shocked by touching this electri electric circuit. That doesn't happen. The same number of charges that enter per unit time that enter this resistor exit, exit it in the same amount of time on the other side. Very important point. So the current through this resistor doesn't change as it comes into the resistor, goes through the resistor, comes down the other side, and then the current uh, through this resistor doesn't change either. Whatever comes in the left side goes out the right side. Really, in thinking about current, um, the thing that helps me the most is to visualize this as water flowing over a waterfall. So, if we've got a, this is a waterfall, and this is the water flow, It splashes over that waterfall and it comes down to the other side. But once it's settled down and you're going to measure how much water is flowing, the flow rate, amount of uh, volume of water divided by the time, the flow rate down here will be exactly the same as the flow rate up here unless there's some tributary or some uh, cave that the water is falling into. You have to have the same amount of water flowing past a certain spot as a function of time. So the water flow is analogous to the current. Well, the height of the waterfall is, is analogous to the voltage. So that, the voltage V equals IR, the voltage across that resistor, is, is analogous to the, to the height of the waterfall. Okay, and we'll say more about that. But uh, what do we mean by series? Devices wired in series have the same current passing through them. Well, 
If you believe what I told you about the current passing through these resistors, then these two guys have to have the same current passing through them. There's nowhere else for the current to go. There's nowhere else for this water to go. If it's just, if there's no tributaries or nothing leading off. And so sure enough, these two are wired in series. But you have to know that it's, this is the source of the power. So, the other way uh, that's important to think about this is to think about the idea that this copper wire here, so I'm, I'm going to darken this in with this red marker. That copper wire is an extremely good conductor. It's copper. It's one of the best conductors out there. The best one that was on that table. So this whole section of the circuit is at the same electric potential. Let's call it V sub A, or the same voltage. This is really, really important because students get so confused about this, but if they understand this diagram, then you'll, you'll go so far on understanding these circuits. So everywhere along this wire, because it's not a good resistor, it's a good conductor, the, the voltage doesn't drop hardly at all. But the voltage does drop across that resistor. That's what we mean by this equation here. There's a voltage difference between this side and this side. Is there a current difference? It, between this side and this side, and you say, no, there isn't a current difference. There's a voltage difference only. So once you get to the other side of this resistor, having gone through the resistor, then we're going to be at a different voltage. Let me call this V sub B. A different voltage or a different potential. Okay? And it's not going to change along this highly conducting wire. Now we're going to go through um, a, a resistor that presents a lot of re um, resistance to the flow of electricity. On the other side of that, we're going to have yet a third voltage. Let's make that blue. So this is... the third voltage here. So the voltage across resistor 1, let's look at that. Voltage across this resistor is VA minus VB. What's the voltage across this resistor? So this voltage is a, is a voltage difference between the left and the right side of the resistor. What's the voltage difference across this resistor? Actually, we're calling this V1. So let's call it V1 here. V2 is the difference between this voltage that's along this wire and this voltage that's along the final piece of wire leading back to the battery. So this is VB minus VC. That's the voltage across that resistor. We'll talk about the loop rule in, in a couple of concepts from now, which will relate the, these changes in voltage to the voltage to the battery. But for now, this is the most important um, bit to understand. But series wires, wiring means, uh, devices that are wired in series means that they have the same current passing through them. All right, let's uh, calculate the equivalent resistance for resistors that are connected in series. Well, let me back up. V1 is VA minus VB. 
But according to this relationship here, definition of resistance, that V1 has to be related to the current in this resistor and its resistance. So V1 is I, the current in the circuit, same everywhere, times R1. This is the one we need in the next slide. What about over here? This V2 is I times R2. You say, why didn't you put a, a 1 and a 2 on the I's? I say, well, because they're the same. Same current through both. All right, so now looking at this circuit, if we want to find the voltage, the total voltage, this is related to the loop rule. The voltage across this battery is going to be the voltage across this resistor plus the voltage across that resistor because there's no change in voltage along this highly conducting wire. The only changes in voltage that we see that are worth worrying about are the voltages across these resistors. So V is V1 plus V2. You add the two voltages up. You know V1 is IR1, V2 is IR2. You can factor out an I. It comes out and you get R1 plus R2, and that, if you state, if you want a V equals IR equation with an equivalent resistance, RS, so RS is the equivalent resistance for resistors connected in series. Well, you can just read it off. That's RS. This is um, RS here. So RS must therefore be this equivalent resistance for resistors connected in series. Must be just add up all the resistances. In this example, we only had two. But if you put a third one here, you would have gotten the same deal. You just had a, th a third one here plus a fourth one plus etc. So you just add up the resistances. No big deal. It's like the um, adding up the voltages of the batteries when they're placed in series with each other. All right, so this circuit is a 12 volt battery and two resistors, a 6 ohm and a 3 ohm, is equivalent to this circuit here where we've just added up 6 ohms plus 3 ohms is 9 ohms. And that's this equivalent resistance. So I can just, instead of putting a 6 ohm and a 3 ohm in a circuit, I can just go out and get me a 9 ohm. Alternatively, the resistors, you can't get them in every, every resistance that you want. So a lot of times what you're dealing with is you want a 9 ohm resistor for a particular application, but you don't have one. But you happen to have a 6 ohm and a 3 ohm, put them in series, and that's equivalent to the 9 ohm. So a uh, 6 ohm resistor and a 3 ohm are connected in series, assuming the battery contributes no resistance to the circuit. We'll talk more about that later. <clears throat> Find the current, the power, and the total power delivered to the resistors uh, by the battery. <clears throat> well, the equivalent resistance we already worked out. It's 9 ohms. The power, this is one of the um, relationships that we, we derived <clears throat> and it's convenient to use here. The current um, is the voltage over the equivalent resistance. How do I know that? Well, V is I R. Here's V, 12 volts. Here's R, here's I. All we have in this circuit is a voltage difference across this battery. And so if the voltage here, if the electric potential is zero on this side of the battery, zero everywhere here, the electric potential is everywhere the same on this side of the circuit. And if it's 12 volts everywhere on this side, 
12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, then the potential drop, how much the potential falls when that water goes over the waterfall, is 12 volts here. And therefore, uh, we're going to put in, uh, if we want to find the current, we just divide both sides by the resistor, resistance. Resistance is canceled. The current is V over R. That's this. V is 12 volts. R is 9 ohms. That's 1.33 amps. Should be fine with a household circuit. They can get up to 18 amps or so. So the power, therefore, is 1.33 amps squared times um, the resistance. Now this is the power dissipated in each resistor. So, so we're talking about, we're going back to this circuit here. And I want to know how much power is dissipated in this resistor. Well, we've already worked out the current. It's 1.33 amps in this equivalent circuit. But this circuit's equivalent. So this is still 1.33 amps. So how much current goes through this resistor? You say 1.33 amps, and I say you're absolutely right. How much current goes through that resistor? 1.33 amps. You're absolutely right. Perfect. And so if we want to find the power dissipated in the 6 ohm resistor, we just multiply this I squared times the resistance itself, it's 10.6 watts. And then in the other 3 ohm resistor, it's 5.31 watts. So that's actually that power, when you think about a resistor and power dissipated in a resistor, that, that power doesn't do any good. I'm sorry. It just gets, the resistor gets hot and, and then the heat dissipates away uh, through convection or through um, diffusion or conduction. If, it's, if the uh, resistor is touching something, some of the heat can diffuse away through conduction. And the total power dissipated, the total power delivered to the resistors is this 10.6, this one here, plus 5.31. Yeah, and so all those kinds of problems work. You're, you're always, I mean, over and over and over again, you will be using V equals IR. And over and over and over again, you'll be using P equals IV or its other forms, I squared R or V squared over R. Um, touch screens uses, use resistances to determine the point of contact. The idea here is that you've got a point of contact in a grid and the, the voltages measure between the point of contact and some conductive layer on either side, those voltages tell you uh, what the resistance is, and that resistance tells you how far you are from this side and from that side. Pretty cool.